What's up guys, it's Bradian again, and we are continuing to put myself on every indie Roblox developer's blacklist. Today we are covering Judy. The title is in all capitals for some reason. Judy is yet another Roblox story horror game, but admittedly this one's a little different. The first major difference you can tell from the game is that the game doesn't look like shit, so that's why I played it. Also, I had people recommend it to me. Before I get too balls deep into this video, I just wanted to start off with saying that the creator of Judy actually watches my videos, and also comments on a lot of them. Which is awkward, because I totally shit on one of his games a while back. And just for the record, if you decide to check out that review, please let it be known that I did not edit that video. The creator is pretty chill and down to earth, and honestly, I really liked his one game, Pinstripe Murders. So maybe Call to the Cryptids was just a bad hiccup. Alright, anyways, I just wanted to say this review isn't going to be super biased. Like, the creator talks to me, so I'm just gonna review this game super positively, and if I had to choose between Judy and my right leg, I'd pick Judy. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm gonna give some fair criticism because being honest with somebody is better than clearly lying to them. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to the actual game itself. Alright, so I wanted to start off and say that the story and lore for this game are not exactly the most straightforward as its peers. Well, Noah's games never are, to be honest. So, you start chapter 1 at the entrance to an abandoned theme park ride. Kind of like It's a Small World. Hope you like Five Nights at Freddy's! The fact that the animatronic just sits there awkwardly kind of reminds me of FNAF. There's also kind of no plot in chapter 1. I've played chapter 1 at least 4 times, and I still can't quite retain what the fuck it was all about. So apparently the lore here is that Judy was this Hollywood star who started to get old and wanted to look really young, so she became a plastic doll. Or a FNAF animatronic? She is such a bad bitch though! I will fuck the shit out of that robot! And chapter 1 is basically you just going level to level, getting chased by monsters, and finding objects. You know, the basic deal. Solve a puzzle in a large room while a monster is in there with you. Honestly, this kind of level design is repeated a lot in this game. Anyways, after seeing robot after robot, you fight giant robot centipede Judy by fucking smashing her with a hammer. And then the door to the aquarium opens afterwards. Chapter 2 takes place at the Judy Manor. Contrary to what the previous level said, I'm honestly not trying to be that guy, but Chapter 1 really isn't all that important to understanding Chapter 2. And 3. That Judy robot shit is never really seen again. It's like we went from robot horror to fantasy body horror in just the click of a button. Also, chapter 2 is really long compared to chapter 1. And don't even get me started on chapter 3. Oh boy! Chapter 2 sees you exploring the mansion where it all began. And you get to see real Judy this time, not animatronic Judy. So, after exploring a mansion full of puzzles and monsters, and a butler that wears a mask, because apparently for some reason worms are eating his face. That's what the point of the mask is! You find that Judy did not actually try to transform herself into a plastic animatronic. Instead, she drank a potion that turned her into plastic? I guess that's there to explain why she looks so damn weird. And after turning plastic, Judy tried to run to this hut out in the middle of a graveyard known as the Perfection Lab, trying to make an antidote, but it did not work. And then she turned into a giant monster. She pulls up in the form of a snail. I initially thought that this was going to be some sort of chase level, but it's just another search for items kind of beat. I kind of like Snail Judy, to be honest, it's creative. After that, you cure Judy, and she turns into the spirit, and apparently, Judy is not the big bad. Her friend and fellow actress, Linda, is. Linda was the jealous friend who ended up giving Judy the potion in the first place, that of which turned her into a monster. And I guess it wasn't enough because Linda also ended up killing Judy and replacing her. But is that not a tad bit redundant, Linda? I mean, it doesn't even matter because Judy is still very much alive and a monster. What was the point of murdering her? Doesn't matter. Chapter 3 is long. Even if it's split up into two parts, it drags hard. Like, in terms of padding, Chapter 3 Part 1 is the worst chapter by far. Anyways, Chapter 3 is called Linda's Chapter. Which makes sense because the game isn't even really about Judy anymore, is it? Linda is the main antagonist and your quest is to get Judy's body back. And honestly, the whole Linda narrative just takes away from the game a lot. Chapter 2 is the only chapter that really has its narrative focus on the real Judy. It would have been fine if Chapter 3 was shorter, but it's just such a large part of the game and it just feels like the game should have just been called something else at this point. Anyways, there's this talking tree lady who used to be friends with Linda and was also an actress. But then Linda stabbed her and turned her into a tree. So then you have to cut her legs free with the saw. Also, there's a yak that flies and eats people, which is why Tree Lady wants to leave, because she's tired of hearing people getting brutally murdered by it. You don't actually have to kill it, don't worry, it's just kind of there. And admittedly, it is pretty scary. 
but it doesn't actually awaken until after you grab the well handle to get the saw. After cutting Tree Lady free, she tells you the passcode to the boat so that you can go after Linda. By the way, you leave the katana behind. And then you get to the island with Linda's lighthouse and go inside and there's this weird ass monster lady in there that you have to get around. There are a lot of monsters in Linda's lighthouse, by the way. One of which is a fucking weird ass bird and it just reminds me of that meme of like that pissed off bird in the rain. Like all it does is just sit there and look like a bum. And And then there's this level where Linda runs around trying to gat you. Why don't you just kick her? Her bones will shatter before she hits the floor. Or beam around the back of the head with your elbow. She doesn't look very physically strong. Then there's this weird segment where the game tells you to grab toy soldiers in the vents. And I didn't realize that the toy soldiers in the vents were above your head the whole time. Like I thought it meant the vents that you could crawl through. Not the ones above your head. So it's revealed that Linda threw Judy's body down something known as the Pit of Envy, but Judy tells you that you actually still have time to get down to her body. So basically, you failed to get the body back, but your new task is to get down to the Pit of Envy. But the chapter does not end here. You have to go through more bullshit with more monsters just to escape the lighthouse, one of which is a walrus. Alright, so when the fuck did the Judy universe just have random monsters in it? The jump from animatronics to magic was one thing, but now we have random bullshit whenever there needs to be. Are we just making shit up as we go along now? I mean, yeah, that's kind of the point of splitting up your game into chapters, is it? The most frustrating and annoying chapter of this entire game yet, it's chapter 3 part 2. So you start out in the school cutscene to set the atmosphere, and there's this little horse-shaped hedge character that's basically only here to give exposition. He betrayed Envy, and he got turned into a sad little horse-shaped hedge. Then he describes his trauma about how he can still feel his limbs, and now he's just in constant, unbearable pain. I, I feel bad for him, he's just, he's just so sad. Oh, sorry. He tells you about this guy named the per the Protracted Man? <laughs> that roams around these parts. He's described as having bones as strong as steel. But isn't everybody's bones as strong as steel? This level annoyed the fuck out of me. First off, I didn't see Emperor Warmblood the first time. Horse. I ended up clicking on him after the Protractor Man got spawned in, so I got killed mid-dialogue and wasn't able to repeat the dialogue again, and I had to look it up on the wiki. All he does is run around and scream and kill you. It's so fucking annoying. Am I the only one that gets completely taken out of a game's immersion once I get killed over and over again? I found the two hooks and needed to open the thing, but for the love of God, I could not find that fucking chain. I even looked it up on the Discord and compared where the image was taken and I still couldn't find it. And nobody wants to play this game with me apparently, so that's fun. So I played it again and I found the chain instantly. I don't want to say anything, but I think the chain did not spawn the first time I played. I don't know. Just saying. Anyways, so after opening the door, you go to this obby. Why would you add an obby when a massive chunk of your player base is mobile players? <laughs> Anyways, most people are usually good at obbies, but I kept dying. I don't know if this was the game being too hard, or if it was just because I was playing the game at 8 in the morning without having slept, or dare I say it, a skill issue. Then you have to go into Loveland, which is not as fun as the title suggests. And then there's this chess puzzle, and oh my god. Long story short, I wanted to die. Now, a lot of people got frustrated with the chess puzzle, and I don't... I don't know if this is a product of them simply not understanding it, or just getting bullshitted, but for me, for me, I felt like I was getting bullshitted. And also not understanding it. So how this puzzle works is that there's a chess board and there's a monster on the board. There's a screen that plays black and white animals that corresponds to the color that you have to step on. So if the screen has a polar bear, then you step on the white square. If it's a black bear, then you step on the black square. But if you get both colors, like a skunk or a zebra, the, I, I don't know. I just ended up standing still whenever those ones showed up because it seemed like that if I moved, I died. At the end of the chessboard lies a door that swings outwards, not inwards. This is not very convenient, by the way. Also, even if the creature doesn't catch you, it will still kill you. After that, you just have to make your way through a mirror maze, and then a movie set, and then finally, Envy's Passage. And then you go to Envy's Castle, which is named weirdly because you're just actually outside of the castle. And there's this goat guy named Vignai, and he has weapons stuck out inside of his head that you have to steal. And then finally you go inside of Envy's castle, which is actually called Envy's Chamber, and it's actually outside. And then you have to fight Envy. Oh my god, it's Circus Baby. Don't melee her. Don't, don't bother meleeing her. Just don't. And then, after killing Envy, you have to fight Envy's Chamber? Which is holding Judy's body. 
And it looks really cool, honestly. It kind of looks like this giant spaceship thing shooting glazers at you. And Linda's being a massive fucking bitch the entire time. So after you kill the chamber, Judy's free. But not really. Envy takes over her body. So you didn't actually kill Envy, you just destroyed her physical form, which is why she possesses Judy. And then Envy and Linda give the typical monologue, saying that they're about to become the most famous people in history. The most famous people in history. The most famous people in history. You guys are gonna have to murder more people than that. Like, if you want to become the most famous person in history, just send your spaceship over New York and blow it all up. Now, when comparing this game to Call of the Cryptids and Pinstripe Murders, this one has a lot more substance to it, I'd like to say. But at least those two games didn't drag on. I know Roblox games are very subjective to critique. I mean, there's a reason why everybody just doesn't try to copy Adopt Me's format. Now, Judy has its audience, and contrary to Call of the Cryptids, the audience doesn't seem to be made up of really young people. Like, Judy's fan base is actually sentient people, so that's a win. Judy's a fine game, alright? It's very well made, and I enjoy the creativity with the designs of everything. This game just seems to kind of make up shit as it goes along, like I said before. Like, I genuinely am not convinced that the guy who wrote Chapter 1 was like, Yep, there's gonna be a mutant walrus down the line. I know it. Where does this even take place in? Like, like, is crazy shit just happening everywhere and nobody cares? I like the absurdity and the weirdness of this game, but I wish things were just a tiny bit more consistent, as weird as that sounds. I mean, I don't exactly doubt that there's lore behind describing where the walrus and all these mystical creatures come from, but from my perspective, the game did not do a very good job at explaining it to the average player. Despite my gripes and nitpicks with Judy, I'm honestly glad that it exists. There's so many dry-ass front-page games nowadays, so at least this one tried to do something different. One thing about Noah's projects is that you can tell that there's some effort behind them all. Mostly in trying to make the outdoor visuals look nice. But in terms of gameplay, I think that there's only so much you can do in the scope of Roblox horror games, apparently. I wish the best for Judy, and I hope Chapter 4 is just as good. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video, and Noah, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't go too hard on your game, I'm just being honest. But... I like it. I like your game. It's cool. So, uh, yeah, I'd recommend this game to play. Um, if you get frustrated on Chapter 3, um, don't be surprised, though. But other than that, it's fun. It's something good to play with friends and buy time on. Uh, I don't know if the narrative is going to appeal to to everybody, but eh, it's still cool. I, I found the fucking cutscenes to be cool. The atmosphere is nice, and I like the the landscapes of it all. Just like in Call of the Cryptids, I really like those too. I'm playing Chapter 4, don't worry. Um, yeah. So, in the description is the link for this game. Check it out. Also, make sure to join my Discord. Say hi to me. Um, you can recommend you can recommend me some games in there. Uh, I do game nights. Also, subscribe, like, share, all that jazz, because, like I said, this game, this channel, my channel kind of relies on people sharing because of the nature of these videos. So, um, yeah. Anyways, see you on the next one. Love you all and bye.